Light can be incredibly useful, incredibly useful. Light travels at 300 million meters per second, which, rounding that up to something that actually makes sense, would be like traveling around the Earth three times in less than a second. It's fast and it's useful. We can use light to transfer information through fiber optic cables, such as, you know, instant messages and lots of computer information. We can cut metal with lasers that shoot a really high intensity beam of light. And not to mention the fact that everything we see is a result of our eyes interpreting the light that comes into our eyeballs. Light. It is a fascinating thing. In today's video, we'll look at how light behaves and when it misbehaves and doesn't go where we want it to, by the end of this video, you will have a good idea of how to block it completely or just bend it into submission. Some materials allow all light to pass through them, some allow only some light to pass through them, and some block light completely. Transparent materials are like glass, plastic, those things. They allow all light to pass through them, and that's kind of nice when you want light to come through, but not something else. So a window blocks the rain, the wind, the snow, the sleet, all that stuff, but it allows light to come through. Translucent materials block some of the light. So anywhere between like 1% of the light all the way up to 99% of the light, that would be technically classified as a translucent material. And that's kind of nice because sometimes you want a room that's translucent. You want to see light. You want to be able to see in it. A lot of the lights come in, but you don't want to actually see what's on the other side of the glass, such as in, you know, a bathroom or something where there will be a privacy window that allows light to come in, but you can't actually see through it. And then opaque materials are materials that just block light altogether, 0% light transmission. So transparent materials, 100% light transmission. Translucent materials are anywhere between 1% and 99% light transmission. And then opaque materials, 0% light transmission. So how does this all tie into solar cooking? Well, if you're trying to heat something up inside of a pot, or you're trying to heat something up inside of a box, you want to make sure that you allow the light to come in, but when the light comes in and actually heats up the pot and heats up the air inside, you don't want the air to leave. Because if this pot was open to the air, it probably wouldn't work so well. The air would come by and just totally cool it right off again. You know, the outside air would. So any air that you heated up would just disappear, would just fly away. Same thing inside this box. If there was no lid, you can see there's a lid on it right here. If there was no lid on it, you know, you might heat up the pot. It might get up to like 140 degrees, but that air is just going to leave the box. It's going to get out, okay? And so what you want to do is make sure you, you put a translucent material, a transparent material around it so that that hot air can stay inside. And so when this pot gets heated up, the hot air stays inside. It creates a layer of insulation, and it stays hot. Same thing here. We put this layer of plexiglass on top of the box, which ends up allowing the light to come in, but the air that it actually ends up heating up on the inside stays hot. So your oven just keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Transparent material is very, very important in solar cooking. Switching gears here a little bit. I know I told you at the beginning of this video that light travels at 300 million miles an hour. And I, I might have lied to you because, you know, light travels at different speeds depending on what it's going through. And so if it's going through air, it's about 300 million miles an hour. Water, 231 million glass, 200 million, vegetable oil, 150 million, alcohol, 140 million, and diamond, 125 million. I just don't know what it is about diamonds that slows light down so much. I mean, light, come on, 125 million, is that, is that all you can do? 125 million meters per second? Really? So what happens if light goes from, say, 300 million miles an hour to 200 million miles an hour? Well, this is what happens. This picture is what happens. The incident ray comes in, air, 300 million miles an hour, wow, really super fast, hits glass, slows down to 200 million miles an hour, which causes it to bend. And then as it leaves, it goes into air again, which causes it to bend again. And every time you have a change in speed for the light, you're going to get a little bit of a bend. This whole bending thing is called refraction. Refraction is the bending of light as it travels from one medium to another. It has to change speed. If there's no change in speed, you won't see any bend whatsoever. But if there is a change in speed, then you will see a bend. This is useful because, you know, we can bend light. We can manipulate light this way. And you might have seen this before if you put like a straw inside of a glass and you see the straw looks broken, but it's really not broken. It's just kind of an optical illusion. Hey, look here, guys. Here's that uh, optical illusion I was just talking about. Straw looks broken, but definitely not. 
The same bending happens within a raindrop that creates rainbows. And so a rainbow is a bunch of water droplets where the light has hit the water droplets and created these different colors. And the way that it works is actually through refraction and reflection. This is the perfect model of it, but white light comes in. And if you know white light, white light's actually a, a combination of all the colors of light put together, which doesn't always make sense in my head because white seems like, it seems like all the mixture of colors you know, should just make this ugly black mess, because when I was, you know, playing in kindergarten and I mixed my colors together, they didn't make white. But anyway, I believe the scientists, I believe them, and I'm going to teach this. So white light comes in, and it ends up bending when it hits a raindrop. And as it bends, it hits the back of the raindrop, and some of it goes, like, straight through, which this picture doesn't show, but some of it actually bounces off. And when it bounces off, it comes back out, and it bends again as it leaves and goes into the air. And the thing is, is that every color, red, green, blue, all of them, they all bend a little bit differently when they travel from air to water to other things. And because they bend just a little bit differently, like one bends more than the other, you end up getting split colors when they actually go through these things. That's why when you put light through a prism, it splits into colors. When you, you maybe look at a glass of water, when it's standing on the sun, you'll see like a little bit of rainbow. Maybe when you're spraying your water hose and you see the, the raindrops from that or the, the water drops from that, you'll see little rainbows too. It's all because of this bending of the white light splits it into the different colors. And so that's how rainbows are made. It's through refraction and reflection. And just a little tip, if you ever want to see a rainbow, the rain has to be in front of you. It could be in the rain, doesn't really matter, but the sun has to be to your back. So if you're ever looking for a rainbow, the sun will always be at your back because the light has to hit the raindrops and bounce back into your eye. Another real life application of refraction is through the use of lenses. We like to see things that are really far away and so through the use of lenses or binoculars or things like that we can actually manipulate the light for us to see it, see objects that are really far away. We also like stylistic shots where maybe the object is in focus and the background is really really blurry. We can also achieve that through lenses and there are a variety of other applications that use refraction too but that's just one really useful one that we, we use quite often. So let's go ahead and sum up the video. We're all finished. In this video, you learned how some materials transmit light and some don't. Transparent materials transmit all the light. Translucent materials transmit some light. And opaque materials transmit no light. After that, you learned how this might be helpful in solar cooking in that it's important to allow light in so that it heats up your food, but it's also important to keep the heat in, which is why you need a transparent barrier such as a you know, piece of plexiglass or an oven bag to keep that hot air inside. Finally, you learned about how light bends when it changes speed. This phenomenon is called refraction, and it's incredibly useful in that it explains rainbows, but it's also applicable to anything that involves the bending of light, namely lenses. Have a great day. Hope this lecture came through clearly. Take care.